We are in this series, week number three. Uh, we're calling Deeper, Deeper. And the whole idea here is wherever you're at in your relationship with God, whether it's like you're still investigating things and checking it out, or maybe you've been serving God for a while, but wherever you're at, take the next step. Hey, let's, let's go to the next level. Let's go a little bit deeper. Let's stretch ourselves just a little bit more because there is more of God. Can I get an amen? amen. Okay, so that's, that's the whole goal, okay, of this, of this series is just to, to take, that, take that next step. We're using um, Luke chapter 8, the parable of the soils, as kind of our teaching point. Uh, and, and we've been going through this every, every week, and we're studying the different types of the soils. Luke chapter 8, verse 11 and 15. And this is where Jesus kind of, Jesus often taught in parables. In this parable, he was teaching about a farmer who sowed seed and scattered seed, and they fell on different types of soils. And the different types of soils represents the different conditions are the postures of hearts. Some of the hearts and some of the soils are ready to receive the word of God, and some are not. So we're utilizing this to go deeper in this season. Jesus often teach, taught in parables, and sometimes when he would teach, it would like confuse people, and they would know what he's talking about, so he would take his disciples, sometimes only his disciples aside, and tell them the actual meaning of the parable. So he says, here then is the deeper meaning to my parable. The word of God is the seed that is sown into hearts, and the seed that fell into the good fertile soil represents the lovers of truth who hear it deep within their hearts. So this is, this is the purpose of the, seed of the seed of God's word, was to fall on fertile soil, was to go deep enough into our hearts that it would actually get roots, you know, dig down some roots and produce fruit in our lives. And they respond by clinging to the word, keeping it dear as they endure all things. And this is the seed that one day, and that's our hope, that God's word would one day go deep enough into your heart and life that you would bear fruit, that it would actually change you, that, that it would change your thoughts, your behaviors, your actions, your relationships, your, your work. It would, just, it would just have a deep and lasting impact in your life. That's the goal for God's word, the seed of his word to bear fruit into our life. Okay. If you miss any of these messages, you can catch them online, part one and part two, to, to see the different soils that we've been talking about today, we're going to look at this one here, which he calls the rocky soil. So backing up in the same Luke chapter 8, Jesus now explaining to his disciples the, the, the different types of soil. He says the rocky soil represents, again, those who hear the message with joy. But there's, some, there's something preventing the seed of God's word from going deeper. There, rocks prevent roots. Amen, church? So there's, there is something in our life that is preventing us from going to the next level. There's, there's a barrier. There's some rocks. And any of you know like gardening or anything like that, you got you to gotta till that soil, get the rocks out because rocks prevent roots. And so wherever you're at in your relationship with God, let me say it this way. There are some rocks preventing you and it's, and it's up to us and maybe the Holy Spirit today to help you bring revelation into your life and what those rocks are. But there are some barriers for you and I at every stage of our walk with God of us going deeper. There are some rocks that are preventing us from going to the next level, taking the next step in our relationship with God. But they hear it and they even receive that message with joy. But like young plants in such soil, their roots don't go very deep. So they believe for a little while, but where, where, whoa, they're not here anymore. Where'd they go? Where'd they go? They, they, they believed, but now they, they're, they're, what, did they not believe anymore? Because they're, they're because the winds of testing come and they fell away. And so, so let me ask you this question, you guys. I want you to ponder this. What does it mean to believe in Jesus? Are all beliefs the same? Let me, let me even back up, like, because maybe that's a little bit too abstract. What does it mean to follow Jesus? What does it mean to be a follower of Jesus? Because we're seeing in this parable of the soils that last week and this week the same. People are hearing, and even this rocky soil, this person with this, some hindrances, some rocks in their heart, not allowing the word of God to go deep enough to bear fruit and roots, they hear it and even receive it with joy, but, but they're gone. They're not here for long. So what does it really mean to follow Jesus? Here's what I believe, that the parable of the, of the soil teaches us of what it really means to follow Jesus, that following Jesus is a pursuit that calls us from the shallow to the deep. The following Jesus is a pursuit, you guys, to moves us from the shallow end of the pool, shallow end of the soil to the deep end. Look at it's, and that's 
Look, every one of us are in one of those. We're from shallow to deep. It starts though in the shallow. The seed is planted in the soil. For, so, for a lot of us, it starts with hearing. We hear the word. That's where it has to start. We hear the word. Then we kind of feel something, sense something. We understand something. And the word of God goes from shallow to deep into our lives. In fact, that's what Jesus discipled his, his disciples, the 12 disciples. He discipled them this way. He took them from shallow to deep. It's actually the process of discipleship. It's the process of, of what it means to be a follower of Jesus. It's going from shallow, just hearing, to deep and letting the word of God go deep in your hearts, okay? And I'll even, let me kind of show you the the deep, okay? Because I'm going I'm to give you a little bit of a cheat today. To, look, today, I just want to warn you, I'm going to get real practical at the beginning, and then I'm going to get some theology. We're going to study the Word. We're going to go deep. Can we go deep today, you guys? We're going to just study the Word together for a moment. I need you to see some things about this, and then we're going to get practical again at the end to show you how you can actually live this deep life that God has called you to. But look, this is what Jesus would eventually call his disciples to in Luke chapter 9. A lot of you are familiar with this. Then Jesus said to them all, whoever wants to be my disciple, oh, you want to you follow me? You want to you go deep? All right. You must deny yourself, take up your cross daily. And then you can, that's what it means to follow me. And they would have known what that means to take up their cross. That was a, the form of execution of the day. They would have interpreted, interpreted Jesus saying this as, man, I got to die to myself and live for you. That's what, that's what Jesus said. If you want to be my disciple, here's what deep looks like, okay? So here's what I want to do today is I want to show you the five, the five stages of following Jesus from shallow to deep. Let me say it this way. You're in, you're in one of these five stages of, what, of following Jesus. They're actually like five depths, just a little bit deeper and a little bit deeper. And every one of us here is in one of these stages. Okay, take some notes with me, guys. Here's the first stage of following Jesus, and that's what we just call today the crowd. The crowd. That's actually where Jesus, his first appeal, the first appeal Jesus made was to the crowd. All right, it was, it was, and, and by the way, that's what our first priority is here at Discovery. Our priority is to the crowd, to those who are not here yet. That's why we give coffee and donuts and watch your kids and stuff so you can hear the word of God. Our whole point though is to just get, is to invite people. Hey, hey, come and check it out. Come and see how awesome God is. That's, that's the whole point of, of the crowd. And Jesus actually started here with this crowd uh, with, with the crowd. And I love, I love, last month I actually was talking to a couple at Next Step, step number one, and they were telling me how much they love Discovery and how it's so, they said, it's so awesome to be at a church that I feel comfortable inviting anybody to. And I just think that is cool, that, th that this is a place where you can come and see. You can come and just check it out. Jesus' first message was to the, to the disciples. His first message was shallow. It was. It was hey, come and follow me. Come and see. That's what he did. For, like when he talked to Peter, the first thing he told Peter wasn't like, go serve me more, Peter. You better, you better die to yourself, Peter. You know what he did for Peter? He filled his boat with fish, right? Peter was like, this is a good day. This is a good fishing day. Dude, I'll follow you whatever. This is awesome. Come on. And so Jesus, his first invitation was just come and see, come and see. But there is another level, you guys, to this, and that's the second level. The second stage is the congregation, meaning at some point, if you like what you see, come and be a part. You know, come and join. Come and, come and join. Like, like, I just, I want you to know, let me just take a moment. I want you to know, you can take as much time as you need here at Discovery staying in the crowd, Ain't no, no one's going to pressure you to, to do anything. You can come and see and check it out. If you need just to catch your breath, maybe you're coming from a season of getting beat up, whether the world beats you up or religion beats you up or whatever it is, and you just need to come and be refreshed a little bit. Look, come and take all the time you need. I always dreamed about a church where the church could gather and be discipled and encouraged, but at the same time, people could just Come and see who are not, but feel like they're welcomed and belong. So please listen, take your time. You're taking, there is no expectation or, but I do want you to know with that, there is a, there is a, a invitation to come and come and join. 
There is. A, there is an to come at your, at your pace, but come and be a part of, come and join. And really, um, this is where church begins to feel like family, where you come and, and, and join. And really, it's joining, like joining a small group is what it is. Come and be a part of a group. Come and, come and, and, and join the family. And honestly, before even joining a church, before even joining a group, come and join Jesus. Okay, because Jesus is inviting you to be a part of his family. Jesus is inviting you not to just to check it out. And that may be where some of you are at today. Some of you are at that come and see, just checking it out. And your next step in this deeper walk and this stretching part of the year where you're just going after God is just to come say yes to Jesus. It's just to come and, and join. Um, but there are more levels. And most of us would actually identify with one of these last three levels. Most of you here would identify with one of these. So the third one is the committed. The committed. Those are the people that, that are saying, look, I just want more of God. Man, I am hungry. How many of you hungry out here and want more of Jesus? Okay? Those are people who say, you know what? I know that salvation is not the end of it all. Man, salvation is the beginning of it all. And, and I want to come and grow. Man, I'm hungry. I want to grow. I want, to, I want more, of, more of God. That's, you may want to choose a small group that is more growth oriented, like a Bible study type group or, or a study or, or even like marriage group. We're a married study or, or Financial Peace University. Maybe that's an area. We're going to offer that this season again, and you need to get your budget right and your accounts in order. You need to grow in that area of your life. I mean, there's all kinds of groups. Maybe you want, or maybe it's just reading the Bible, man. And I promise you, you develop a habit of reading the Bible, you will grow. Maybe it's the 21-day thing, and you're going to start praying and developing a habit of that. You do that, I promise you, you will grow. That's that next stage where you say, man, you know what? I've already came and seen. I've already, I'm already there, but man, you know what? This year, I'm going to come and grow. I'm going to stretch myself. I'm going to go deeper, and I'm going to take the next step, and I'm going to grow this year, man. I'm going to dig some deeper roots, man, and and so that's, that, that's there's, there's more, though. There's more. Maybe you're there, but there's more. Here's the next step. Check this out. It's the core. And the core's primary message is to come and serve. Come and serve. So the, the big difference between the committed and the core, whereas the committed, they're like, oh, man, I'm hungry. I want to grow. The transition from committed to the core is not, not only do I want to grow, but I realize now I can help somebody else grow. I realize now that it's not about me growing anymore. It's, uh, wow, I can make a difference in somebody else's life. Like I can, I can, I can actually, God, God can use me in somebody else's life to serve and make a difference. And if you think like, oh, really? Is that, a, is that really a part of following Jesus and, and really going deeper? Man, you don't know what it's like to follow Jesus until you worship one and serve one, Okay. And that team that does that here at Discovery, we call them the dream team. And there are people who are not just coming to grow, but they're coming to serve. They're coming to serve you in a wide variety of areas where it's media or kids or parking or guitar or singing in a lot of different areas. But they're saying, you know what? I just don't want to come and grow. I want to come and serve. And you can go ask any one of these people on the dream team. You go ask any one of them on your way out, you know, and they'll tell you that they'll just say something like this. You know, this is what it means to be a follower of Jesus. This is what it means, man, to actually make a difference. It's not about coming on a Sunday and kind of getting what I can get out of Jesus and what I can get out of this church. Man, what it's, re what it's really about, where it's really at, is where you can make a difference. They would tell you that. Okay, this is, this is the core, those who come and serve. And if you are, you know, wondering how to get, we, it's so easy to do this at Discovery. It's actually today. Step three is today. And we get people connected to the dream team. You can come today at 3.30 and we will get you connected. And you can step into this hole from the come and see or the come and grow. And you can step into this, hey, God, use me. Okay. And what you will be doing in that is you will be going deeper. That's what you'll be doing. In fact, this is our strategy at Discovery. All the, all the feelings that you've done so far, that's our strategy. Here at Sunday, we're at the Sunday experience. That's the whole come and see. That's what we're doing. We're saying, hey, come on and come and see. And then we say, hey, you know what? Come and join. Join a small group. Get connected to relationships. Then we say, oh, you want to grow? Take the next steps. Go a part of our discipleship program, man. And then we say, oh, you want to you wanna come and serve? Come to step three. Join a dream team. It's the whole strategy. This is the whole strategy of our church. And please listen, it's not a program. 
These aren't programs, okay? This is intentional and strategic to help you get your soil right so that the word of God would go deep enough that it would bear fruit and dig roots into your life. Amen, Amen, church? This isn't program. This is actually what it means to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. Okay, you want to go deep? I'm just saying, you want to go deep? You, you, there's, there's another level. There is more. And actually, Jesus took it to like this ultimate. This, he took it to a whole new level, which I'm just really challenging you. I want to challenge you to live the way Jesus called us to live as disciples and followers of Jesus. And that is a commissioned life where you actually realize, you know what? I've been commissioned by God. I have the calling of God on my life. That's where, that's, that's someone who says, you know what? Um, I'm not just going to give God a Sunday. I'm just not going to give God a service. I'm going to give God the rest of my life. I'm all his. And I'm not talking about joining the priesthood or becoming a pastor or a preacher or anything like that. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about someone who just realized that they've been called, commissioned by God, where at your, in your home, in your family, you say, you know what? I'm called by God. I'm going to be the priest of my home, in my workplace. I'm going to be a light on a hill in my workplace. When I invite those people over to watch the playoffs later or the Super Bowl or to go, go do my tailgating at that baseball game, I'm going to figure out how to leverage that to tell people about my church and my God. That's, that's someone who knows it's not, it's not about a day. They've given them it. They give God their life. They've taken up their cross and they've surrendered the control. What they've done is they've came and died. And that's the invitation. And, almost, and, and, and that sounds foolish to a lot of people. Like, what are you talking about, man? That doesn't make sense. Why does, why do I have, hey, let me say it this way. Why does the seed have to die? Why do I have to bear my cross? Why do I, why does it, why does I, why does the seed have to actually die? Jesus said it this way, very plainly. You must die so you can truly live. Hey, that seed that was planted in you, it's got to die so it can give birth to something new. It's got to die so it can actually build roots and build fruit into your life. And, and in 1 Corinthians, it's not in your notes, but Paul actually said, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18, Paul said the message of the cross, this whole bearing your cross thing and coming and dying so that you can actually live, that, that message of the cross is, is foolishness to those who don't believe. In one translation, it says, it doesn't make sense to those who are already perishing, right? That this, this message, the, the cross that represents, represented defeat to the follower of Jesus is an image of victory, The cross that represented guilt to the follower of Jesus is an image of grace. The cross that represents condemnation to the follower of Jesus is an image of freedom. The cross that represents suffering is an image of healing and hope. The cross that represented death is an actual image of life. Because my life is not my own, I live for Jesus. I'm his. Can I get an amen, church? Will you give God some praise right there? This commissioned life. Now, you're somewhere, you're somewhere in this process. You're somewhere in these stages, and there, there are some rocks in the way. There are, there are some rocks in the soil that are preventing the seed of God's word from going to the next level, and from you taking that next step, from you taking, from you going deeper. And I want, I want to encourage you and challenge you guys that to live, to live in such a way that you, you impact your life, impact the people around you for eternity. That you're living not for yourself, but you're living to make a difference in this world, a difference for Jesus in this life. Look, this is, this is probably the most challenging message of the series. I'm just going to, but this is the deep life. You want to go deeper, it's not about you. If you want to go deeper, you take your cross. You, you realize that you've been commissioned and called by God, and you take up your cross daily. It's, it's, what, it's what God always planned for us to do to live this way, to impact others. To, I love this verse, 2 Timothy chapter uh, 2, verse 1 and 2. Like, like Paul now to encouraging, I want you to see this, he's encouraging Timothy, who he raised up. He raised up this young, uh, young guy from, from just a new believer all the way to, he sent him to go pastor a church. And he's telling him, Paul is telling Timothy, you then my son, he's got this deep connection he's built with him. Be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus and the things you have 
heard me say, you heard me say some things. I, Paul, told you some things, Timothy, in the presence of many witnesses. Entrust those things into reliable men, reliable people who will also be qualified to teach others. This is what I call a generational scripture. This is, this is what I call living a reproducing life. That, that when you live your life to impact others, you live your life to reproduce. You know what? That's what a seed was meant to do. Did you know that? That seed that God has planted that was intended to go to the depths of your heart, that it would, that it would uh, build roots and spring out fruit in your life. Did you know that's not the end of the seed? That was never the end of the seed that God placed in your heart. It was never just to bear fruit. It was always to reproduce itself. That's the purpose. The greater purpose of every seed is reproduction. So I want you to see it. Paul, I just want you to, Paul reproduced himself inside of Timothy. He, he, he got him close, put him in proximity, poured himself into this young man, raised him up. And then he said, Timothy, I want you to do the same. Uh, just like I reproduce myself and the seed of the word of God inside of me, man, you need to reproduce it into reliable people. And then they're going to they're gonna reproduce seed into other reliable people. If you're serious about serving God, then start living a reproducing life. If, you're, if you really want to be a devoted follower a devoted disciple of Jesus Christ, then live a reproducing life. If you're ready to go deeper, this is, this is the deeper call right here. And this is actually what Jesus, this is how Jesus lived. This is how Jesus discipled people. He did the same thing. He reproduced himself. In fact, when Jesus, when he taught to the crowd, when Jesus taught to the crowd, he confused them a lot of times. His public ministry wasn't that successful. Okay, people followed him, but listen to this. The longer that people stayed in the crowd, the more they would get offended and frustrated and fall away. You can see it in the scriptures. The, the people who were in the crowd fell off. Why? Because their roots didn't go deep. They never took the next step. But Jesus, what he would do is he would teach the crowd, but then he would he, he'd come away with these disciples, right? And he'd sit with them and he'd get these 12 disciples and he'd pour himself, he poured his life into these 12 disciples men, and every one of us is a direct impact and result of those 12 guys because those 12 disciples reproduced themselves and, and, and reproduced the seed of God's word in this message into someone who told someone who told someone who told someone to finally get to you. Wouldn't you love to know, like, like trace it back to one of the disciples? Like, how did it get to me? You know what I mean? Because someone told someone to sell someone, this is the gospel, this is the way God designed this gospel, this, this transformation to happen. This, not only this gospel to spread, but for lives to be changed and us to make a difference, we're called to live a reproducing life. Billy Graham, in an in article uh, towards the end of his ministry here, um, someone interviewed him and asked him, do you have any regrets in life? And without hesitation, he said, I have one. And he was thrown back. And he said, well, what's... What's that one? And Billy Graham said, I wish I wouldn't have done as many crusades as I would have poured myself into a few people and taught them what I know how to do. You know, what he was basically saying was, was how it was all designed. Now, I'm, now, his legacy, I'm not diminishing his legacy. His legacy is going to outlive himself, and he's impacted so many people, and so many people are serving God because of him. But his one regret was this. It was, I wish I would have reproduced myself inside of a few people. Instead of talking to the masses as much as I did, I wish I would have got a small group. Look, this is God's plan for your life. And if you want to go deeper, this is the ultimate call that the, the, the deepest you can go is to come and take up your cross, take up the call of God and reproduce yourself in others. This was actually from the very beginning of time. This has been our mandate, hasn't it? Let me show it to you. Genesis chapter one. This is, um, let, me get, let me get theology and teaching on you just a minute, okay? Genesis chapter one. Then God said, let the land produce vegetation and seed bearing plants. See, God did this really cool thing with the living things. He, and he only did it, this genius thing with all the living things. He put inside the living things seed so that they would be able to 
reproduce themselves. And then it says, and trees of the land that bear fruit with seed in it according to their various kinds. And that word literally means that the living things were able to reproduce themselves according to their own likeness. Okay. That's, and it's genius what God did. And it was so, and God saw that it was good. And then jumping to verse 26, it says, then God said, let us, let us now make man in our image and likeness. So let's, let's take man and even separate him even more. And let's put our spirit, our seed inside of him, which is why mankind hosts the presence and the spirit, the seed of God. So when we reproduce ourselves, we're not just reproducing of our kind and likeness of humanoid type, but we can reproduce the spirit of God. We can reproduce a godly legacy. Come on, somebody. Are you seeing this, you guys? This was God's plan from the very beginning in our image and our likeness so that they may rule. And God blessed them and said to them, God's very first words to you, very first words to men, be fruitful. Now, me and Veronica, we're doing our part. We got three kids. I don't know about you. We're doing, <laughs> we're done. Okay, that's it. But that's not even really what he was talking about. What he was literally saying here is, is bigger than that. What he was saying is, hey, th that which I put inside of you, multiply. Live a reproducing life. You need to see this from God's vision, from the, a bigger vision standpoint. So when God created that one tree, he wasn't just creating a tree. He was putting within that one tree the, the capacity for every tree that would ever exist on the planet. And when God created man, he was just not creating a man. He was creating and putting and shoving inside of that man every man that would ever exist. See, when God sees you, he doesn't just see you. He sees uh, through you, the generations of people that you will impact. See, God exists. He is timeless. God does not exist in, time, in our time-bound state. So when God sees you, he sees all the things that he has deposited inside of you, the seed in his image, and all the people, the generations that you will impact and affect because of your life. Come on, give God some praise, church. Are you seeing this? So, God, a lot of, you guys know the story. Um, the fall of man happens, sin enters the world. And instead of us passing on this godly legacy and reproducing that inside of people, we pass down more of the stories now, we're passing down tragedy. We're passing down trial and trauma and, and just dysfunction because of the brokenness of our world. But then enters Jesus on the scene. He lives 33 years. He pays the debt of sin, breaks the curse of sin. And instead of passing down curses from generation to generation to generation, Jesus comes and breaks the curse of sin. And then he dies, he pays the debt, he raised from the dead, and he finds himself in Matthew chapter 28 on the, the Mount of Olives. And this is actually where, where it's called the Great Commission. This is, the, this is the, the commissioned life that he's talking about. And Jesus is saying, he starts off and he says, look, to his disciples, Again, if you want to be a disciple, if you want to go deeper, here it is. I have, he says, I've been given all authority, meaning I, I have broken the curse. I have authority of heaven and earth. I have broken the curse of sin off your life. Now, therefore, go and make what? Disciples. That word literally means take who you are and what you have and reproduce it in other people. I just think it's so powerful and interesting that the very first words of God to you, to mankind, was go reproduce yourself. Go reproduce. And then the very last words before Jesus was taken up to the clouds was, hey, hey, go reproduce yourself. Live a reproducing life. This, you guys, is the gospel. This is the call. And if you want to go deep, then take up your cross and follow him. In fact, Hebrews would say it this way. Hebrews, the author of Hebrews, he says, in fact, some of you, by this time, you shouldn't just be coming and taking notes in a binder. By this time, in fact, by this time, you ought to be teachers. You know this stuff. You've heard this stuff. You, you, this is in you. That seed is already in you. But you need someone to teach you the elementary truths of God's word all over again. You need milk. And the, the writer, the author of Hebrews here is like playing. Now he's toying with them. He's all, you need milk, little baby. <laughs> oh, 
And right, look, look, he goes on, he goes, he says, anyone who lives on milk, still being an infant. Can't you just make it? Look, I'm not playing with you. He is. The Bible is saying it. I'm not saying it. I ain't saying it. But the Bible is saying, in fact, by this time, some of you should be teaching this stuff. Some of you, 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 anyone who lives on that milk being still an infant, you're not acquainted, right, with the teaching about righteousness. But solid food is for the mature who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. So God has called us. I titled this message, Living a Reproducing Life. This is, this is, if you're a follower of Jesus, no matter what stage that you're at and where you find yourself and what next step it is for you, I want you to know that that's the destination. That's God's call and plan for your life, to reproduce yourself, the seed of God's word inside of other people. It's the highest call. It's the highest privilege that God has given us to do. Now, let me, let me close just giving you these five, five steps how you can, you can do that. You can live a reproducing life. Again, you don't need to go into the priesthood. You don't need to, to do it how I do it, but there is really, let me just give, make it very simple. I'll put the cookies on the bottom shelf so everyone can eat some today, okay? You can do this. You can live a reproducing life. And in fact, even if you just apply these five principles, if you just apply these five things to your kids who is, who who we're, that's where our ministry starts. That's where we're supposed to be reproducing ourselves into, or even if you just did that, you'd be winning. You just do this with your kids. But, but if you want to live a reproducing life, here they are, five steps. Number one, take some notes, you guys. Number one is you got to focus on the person. Focus on the, the person, all right? It'll live in, live in others' focus life. The, the deeper call is an other-focused life. Okay, it's so easy to get caught up in yourself and your own needs and your own interests. Very rarely, it's rarely do people live that way where they wake up and they they think about others. Most people wake up and they're thinking about their agenda and their plans and their life and their problems. But I'm telling you that one of the key ingredients to happiness, you want to live a happy life, is live an other focused life. Okay, if you want it, you want an ingredient for an unhappy life, you make life all about you. If you just focus on your needs and your needs alone, it's, I'm telling you, it's a recipe for an unhappy life. But if you want to be a disciple of Jesus and reproduce yourself in others, you got you to elevate people to a higher place in your priority. Okay? Philippians 2 says it this way. Don't be selfish. You can't, selfishness will undermine the work of God in your life. When you make it about you, it's not about you. Don't try to impress others, but be humble, thinking of others as better than yourselves. That's what it means to be a disciple, to think of others more than I think of myself, to think of others even better than myself. Don't look only for your own interests, but take on the interests of others too. Focus on people, not, not the program, not your, your career, not, not all the things, not, not any of the other rocks that are getting in the way from you actually doing this. Focus on the person, okay? When, when Jesus looked at Peter, he didn't see a project. He saw a person, okay? That's, that's who he saw, although Peter, you know, he was a tough project. But anyway, number two, number two is to focus on the positive. And this one's hard. This one's really hard because there's so much negative in the world. There's so much negative in people, right? There's negative everywhere. And when you focus on it, look, that's, let me just say it plainly, that's not what disciples do. It take, it's so easy to find the negative in a situation. It's so easy to find the negative in a, in a person. Any fool can find the negative, but you need to stay away from negative people. They have a solution or a problem for every solution, right? Focus on the positive. Everyone has positive in them. Sometimes it's like gold. You need to go digging. You need to dig a pretty good hole, a pretty big hole before you find it, but everyone's got it, amen? Everyone's got some positive inside of them. I'm trying to help you live, you guys, a reproducing life. And you are, let me say it this way, you are currently reproducing yourself, whether you know that or not. You are. I'm trying to help you reproduce the seed of God's word that's inside of you, that you would reproduce that kind and likeness. You're reproducing yourself and your kids. You already see it. And the people around you, you already see those attitudes, those behaviors, those habits, those shortcomings. You, 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 you already, you're reproducing 
yourself. I'm trying to help you to reproduce according to the image and likeness of God, according to the seed of God's word that is in you, to focus on the positive. Say it plainly. Let me say it plainly. If you want to be a disciple, if you want to live this deep life, you got to, you got to learn how to forgive. You can't focus on the negative and focus on the failures. You need to learn how to forgive it, let it go, and focus on the positive, church. Amen. Ephesians chapter 4, 32. Instead, be kind to each other, tender hearted. We talked about that last week, that hard soil. Be tender hearted, forgiving one another. That's what disciples do. That's, for some of you, listen, that's, that's the, the rock that's in the way right now of you taking the next step. For some of you, you just need to let that go. You need to forgive him. It's preventing you from going to the next level. It's preventing that seed of God's word from going deeper in your heart and actually taking some roots and bearing fruit. Forgive one another, not because they deserved it, not because they even asked it, but because God has forgiven you because you belong to Christ. That's why I forgive. That's why I'm going to let them off the hook. Be, not because they deserve it, because I belong to Christ. Focus on the positive. You can do that. You can live a reproducing life. Focus on the person. Focus on the positive. Number three, focus on the potential. Focus on the potential. Just like everyone has positive in them, every person has potential. And you know what the five most powerful words that you could ever say, that you could ever hear? I'm telling you, this is discipleship. You want to know what discipleship is and want to disciple someone? These five words, not in your notes. What I see in you. Those are some powerful words right there. That is discipleship. When you say, hey, can I tell you what I see in you is a conqueror. What I see in you is a pastor. What I see in you is a world changer. I tell my kids every day when I drop them off, every one of my kids, hey, be a leader, not a follower. You're a Hannish and a world changer. Go change the world. kid. I tell them every day what I see in you. That's what discipleship is. I am so thankful for the people who spoke into my life. They saw potential in me that I did not see myself in any time that you can identify the potential in somebody that they don't even see. Your influence will grow. You'll grow in influence. What I see in you. That's what discipleship is. First Peter chapter four says that you actually have some potential. Every one of you, each of you has received a gift from God. There's a, there's an endowment, a grace, a spiritual gift that God has given you to actually take that step. He, that's what he made. It's what he gave it to you to serve others. So go, go be some good servants of God's various gifts, all the variety of gifts that God has given us. And when you can see past the stuff in people's life, the negative and all that stuff, and focus on their potential. You can go to step four, which is to focus on their purpose. Focus on their purpose. Just like people have spiritual gifts, they also have a divine purpose. You have a purpose. God has a specific, a divine purpose for your life. He has a purpose for the people in your life. Even the people that irritate you in your life, God has a specific purpose. Look, and don't complicate it either. Well, I don't know what that is. And what's my, what's my, can I tell you something? If you're a child of God, if you're a child of God, this is your purpose to live a reproducing life. That's what your purpose is. Every single one of you. That's, and if you don't know like a specific, just start obeying God with that, with what he told us to do back in Genesis one, the last words that Jesus ever told us to do, just start doing that. And I promise you, your specific call and purpose will become more clear when you start obeying God, what God has already told you to do. Amen, somebody? Am I, am I? I'm preaching a lot better again than you guys are responding. Come on, man. Focus on their, their purpose. Um, Ephesians 2.10, check this out. For we are God's, that, you're, you're a masterpiece of God. That's who you are. You are, you are God's masterpiece. Let, check it out. Your children are God's masterpiece. They're God's masterpiece. They have a purpose. Those people that you work with, they're God's masterpiece. They have a purpose. God has a divine purpose for their life. Those people that frustrate you and get on your nerves, listen, they are God's masterpiece. They have a purpose. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so that we can do those good things that he planned for us long ago. And if you don't know what that purpose is, we make it simple. Next steps, right? Step three is today. 
today. We can, we can get you from, if you're in one of those stages, like come and see or come and grow, and you want to you wanna put some purpose in your life, we make it simple. Step three is today. We'll help you get some purpose in your life, get you connected to one of those dream teams and making a difference in your life. So you're just not coming and growing. You're coming and serving. Amen? That's today. Anyone can come. You're all invited at 3.30 back here. Focus on their purpose. Let me just say this to you. I'm, out of, I'm running out of time. You can't really... It takes a disciple to make a disciple. If you don't know your purpose, you can't help other, other people find their purpose. The scary thing about this, if you don't know your purpose, you can't help your kids find their purpose. Focus on their purpose. You got to know your purpose. And then number five, focus on the process. Why focus on the, the, the process, Jason? Because it's a process. That's why. Because this don't happen overnight. This is not quick and it's not easy for that seed to actually take root enough, to go deep enough, to, to build roots and sprout up and bear fruit. It takes time. It's a process. I didn't get here where I am today overnight, man. It was a process, man. If you knew the old me, someone wanted to beat me up last week because they knew me, the old me. <laughs> Have you ever had that happen to you? You know, you're like, your God has changed you so much. You know, you bump into someone and they say, uh, I did. He went to, he went to the elementary school. He's like, you remember me? Horse man elementary. I said, Hey man, that's the old me. Okay. <laughs> You know, I'm saved, not soft. Don't catch it slipping, bro, all right? <laughs> all right, so. Better watch yourself. I wasn't always saved. <laughs> Delete that. No, I'm kidding. Okay, let me go. Quickly, Luke chapter 6, last verse, last verse. I want to give you, uh, I put verse 38 in your handout. But I need to show you verse 37 because look what Jesus, the context of this. He says, do not judge and you won't be judged. Don't condemn and you won't be condemned. Forgive and you will be forgiven. Now catch it up in your notes. He says this, give and you will receive. Now a lot of people think that's a money verse. Oh, that's a finance verse. No, it's not. He's actually talking about your relationships. He's saying whatever you give in your relationships, hey, hey, hey you'll get back. Your gift will return to you in full, pressed down, shaken together to make room for more, running over and poured out into your life. What he's saying is the more that you, the the amount that you bring out the best in others is the amount you're going to get back. The amount that you encourage others is the amount you're going to get back. The amount that you're going you're gonna to elevate others is the amount that you're going to get back. The amount that you believe in others and see their potential is the amount you're going to get back. God has called you, church, to live a reproducing life. That is the purpose of the seed. It wasn't just to grow roots. That's part of it. It wasn't just to keep you firm and secure and give you a foundation and be immovable and unshakable and to bear fruit in your life, fruit that will last. Yes, that's part of it, but God is seeing from a much bigger perspective, a bigger vision. The seed that he deposited inside of you was always meant to be reproduced was always meant to outlive you. Live a reproducing life. Come on, I'm out of time. Let's bow our heads and close. God, we just thank you for your grace and your love. And thank you, God. Lord, I know that, that so many of us are here today and we're in those different stages. The crowd or the congregation. Some of us are even in the committed and beyond. And God, I just pray that whatever the rocks are in our life, whatever those things that are barriers are preventing us from taking the next step, God, that we would identify spirit of the living God, shed light on our hearts right now to remove those rocks, to allow the word of God to go deep in our hearts, to put down roots and bear fruit. Some of you are here today with every head bowed and eye closed and And maybe you need to move from that come and see stage to the like, come and join. Come and be a part. And I'm not talking about joining a church or religion or any of that stuff. I'm talking about Jesus. And some of you need to come and surrender the control of your life to Jesus for the very first time. Others of you need to do it again because something happened to the soil here. Things just got in the way. Wherever you're at, wherever you're at, there's a next step. And that may be the step for you. And can I pray with you right where you're at? If you're ready to go to that next level with God. I mean, no arm twisting or anything, but I would love the privilege to pray with you and to help you take that step. 
I'm not going to have you come up to the front or call you out, but right where you're seated, if that is you, I'm going to pray with you and help you give some words. Do me a favor, though. Lift your hand in three, two, one. Come on, say, I'm ready to go all in. Come on. I'm going to the next step. Yes, 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 yes. Lift it high. I want to see you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Over here, over here. Yes, all over this place. All over here and there. Back there. Good job, young man. Over here. These three. Praise God. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. Over here, too. Yep, yep. Thank you, God. Go ahead and put your hands down. Pray something like this, church. Say, Jesus, forgive me. I'm tired of living apart from you. Today I surrender the control of my life. I'm taking the next step. Jesus, you're my Lord, my Savior, my God, and I surrender everything to you. Come live inside of me and take over. Make me brand new. Thank you, God, for saving me forgiving me and giving me a fresh start today. I receive it right now. God, I speak over every person right now that wherever they're at in their walk with you, that they have identified by the help of your spirit where they're at in the stage. There is a next step. There is a next level. There is more that you are going to do in their lives. So right now, I pray against those rocks that are in the way, every barrier of hindrance. Maybe it's, it's resentment and bitterness, the lack of forgiveness. God, right now, we just let those things go. We let them. Very often those rocks, God, they're me. They're just me getting in the way. God, help us to let go and give you full control. Thank you, God, for what you're going to do as your people just trust you and take the next step and go deeper. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Come on, if you receive that, will you give God some praise, church? Amen. Amen.